contrary to what my shirt says, I don't skate naked. I, I do skateboard, but not naked. <laughs> and I am old. And I did just recently take up skateboarding. Therefore, I don't have a single age-appropriate injury, but I have lots of injuries from skateboarding. And one might say, why the hell do you skateboard or why did you take it up at such a late age? And the truth is, I have never in my entire life found anything more. I've never gotten closer to a meditative state, if you will. And I think I have found the yoga for spazzy people. It is the most incredible feeling when you're on that that board and just rolling around. And I, I've been completely inspired by Sandler, my 14-year-old special needs son who gravitated towards skateboarding and found that skating has really connected each and every one of his dots and has propelled his cognitive, his fine and gross motor skills. It's given him a community. It's given us a community of people and a support group that we've never had in our entire lives. I think one of the most fascinating things to me about skateboarding, I I could watch it all day, every day, and I do. (laughs) I clock so many hours at a skate park. It's, It's crazy. But what's fascinating is skateboarders will hit something so tiny and small like a pebble or a rock little seed from a tree and that happens to be one of the most dangerous things to hit and they'll go flying but yet they'll use their imagination and and resources and put the most ginormous obstacles in their path in order to accomplish alling over it or doing a trick over it or doing something so insanely dangerous and courageous and crazy to get the the nanosecond I'm not good with time measurements measurements at all but whatever amount of time and it's such a teeny tiny amount of time they will get a feeling of accomplishment and I've seen it over and over again with Sandler. And to me, it's the most incredible thing in the entire world. And they'll what they'll put themselves through and put their bodies through in order to achieve that, that millisecond or whatever it is of achievement, is it's extraordinary. And I had to take up skateboarding just to get the feeling. I get that feeling just from rolling around and not falling off of the skateboard. <laughs> But I've fallen off enough to know what it feels like, what they're, what, uh, uh, not even, but a, a smidge of what they feel like. And it's it's really exceptional and it's incredible. And I'm Nikki Lynn Chase, and this is my podcast about hurdling and alling those life obstacles and navigating life's unexpected as a single mom to two special needs kids. I started hanging out with skateboarders when I was a kid and I partly did it because I knew it was a shoe in to piss my dad off. He thought skateboarders were kind of the degenerates of the universe and I also did it because I didn't fit in at my high school and I was this gangly, goofy, awkward, incredibly uncomfortable teenage girl and I went to a very pretentious uh, school pretentious high school and it was very well to do there was no diversity and um, it wasn't a terrible place I just didn't fit in that place and I found a house full of skateboarders and they kind of represented the misfits of the universe in a good way and in a way I could relate to and they kind of became my people and what I realized was a lot of them didn't have great home lives or you know things things were rough but they were very resourceful in that they made this family and they were a family and they let me into that family and I got to be part of it. And they were the most accepting people, group of people I knew in the world. And the funny thing is everyone thought they were such rebels, but at the time the movement was something called straight edge where they would write with Sharpies on their hands and kind of meant, you know, we don't, drink or or do drugs that's not to say people wouldn't in the group or or didn't before didn't after but at the time it was it was ironic because Nikki's hanging out with skateboarders oh my god and they were 
so much better behaved than the kids I was going to high school with. And I made a pretty good getaway driver because I didn't look the part of a, of a total rebel and I had the big Volvo station wagon so I could fit a lot of kids in the back seat. And in Colorado, of course, there weren't very many pools because <laughs> of the weather and you know like they like today you get chased out of everywhere so they needed a getaway driver and mostly people were skating in ditches or as they do now just street skating and when we got to uh the state of washington sandler got his first skateboard and i kind of thought well that's kind of dumb again thinking back to Colorado, like the weather, where we was going to skate and the kid barely knew how to walk. So what's he going to do with a skateboard? But he just loved it. And it's just, I got this feeling of nostalgia. You know, I hadn't been around skateboarding a lot in, in the last, you know, few years before that. And I just, oh, the skateboard. And he wouldn't put it down and he would sleep with it. And it was the only thing I could discipline him with. It was the only thing I could put away and he'd get mad or sad. And he would, I'd watch him and he m meticulously sort of came up with this technique where, you know, he was delayed in walking. So he would hold on to it with, it, like, kind of ride it like a dog. He'd hold on to it with two hands and then push off with one foot. So he was on all fours when he'd ride it. And then he would also create obstacles and put boxes together. And I would have flashes back to when I did hang out with my, my skater friends and think, they're very creative, you know, like they really had to make do with what they had, which was exactly what Sandler was doing. You know, we didn't have much. We really didn't even have much in the way of furniture or things to put together. Yet I'd find boxes kind of scooted up against like a table or, you know, things he was not supposed to be on. But it was so impressive that he was coming up with a way to sort of defy the odds. And not necessarily in a rebellious way, but just to make obstacles and to challenge himself. And of course, then we end up in Southern California and it's everywhere. And there are skateboards on the streets. There are skateboards in the alley. And it's the constant hearing the skateboards, the, the wheels on cement. And I love that sound. I know it makes a lot of people want to call the police. But to me, it's a it's a beautiful sound and it's become that much more beautiful because it's what's connected Sandler to everything. And it has now given us a community and it has given us our people, our support group. So when the pandemic hit, I realized I needed that skateboarding, those skateboarding resources to sort of kick in. And I knew I needed, if we were going to get through all of the unknown, we were going to need our mental health, which was skateboarding and that outlet. So I immediately, you know, there was rumor that they were going to fill in some of the skate parks with sand and that ended up being true, which was devastating. And I thought, what are we going to do? And I thought, think back to when you were a kid and th there wasn't anything legal to skate. People were skating ditches and you were driving driving around and look for things. Just go back there. Go back there in your headspace. And so we started driving around, and then I invested in a, a rope ladder. And part of that was, yes, the rebellious me wanted to not be the oldest and the last one out of the skate parks when the, when the cops came, the skate parks that weren't filled in with sand. And also the parental part of me wanted everybody to be able to get out safely and and or if there's anybody who's injured, be able to get out of the skate park. Because when you're a skater, you're determined. And you're going to skate whether you're allowed to or not. That's sort of been the the design of a skater from the get-go. It It's always been sort of a taboo activity. And sometimes that sound does make people just call the police. I happen to love it. It's a very therapeutic sound to me, the, the wheels on cement. But we... We got really good at trespassing or poaching skate parks, and we got really good about finding places to skate, and I felt like I was kind of reliving my, my youth, and it was amazing. And at one point when the, when the shutdown had first happened and we were on our way to uh, the grocery store to kind of pick up the, the last things that we could pick up before you weren't really allowed to leave the house, and there was just that weird scary uncomfortable air we're driving by a parking lot 
where there had been a huge Tony Hawk demo that we had gone to um, months and months before. And Sandler never knew who Tony, he doesn't know who, and he's skated with many iconic skateboarders, but he doesn't know who anybody is, nor does he care if you are kind and you have a, a fondness for skateboarding, you're, you're a friend of Sandler's. And I had taken him to a demo and he was not happy with me because I told him he wasn't going to skate and there was a huge vert ramp and it was a grand opening for this restaurant. And Tony was there and we met also a, another gentleman by the name of Mickey and his teacher had introduced him. We ran into his teacher and she introduced him and Tony ended up, they had this awesome exchange and Tony promised him a skateboard and he made good on his promise. And a few weeks after the, the event had gifted Sandler the skateboard with the signature and Sandler still never understood who Tony Hawk was to him it was some guy who was really friendly and awesome skated and he skated really really well but he made good on a promise and he gave Sandler the skateboard that he told him he was going to give him and so we are driving by the the restaurant and he starts crying and I'm thinking it's got to be just the the air you know it's so uncomfortable and the unknowing of what's going to happen and I asked him I said what what's the matter buddy like what what are you so upset about and he pointed to the parking lot and he said the West Want is closed mommy what's Tony and Mickey they're not going to have a job and it dawned on me that he didn't again he didn't see them as big skaters or people that probably we're going to skate through the pandemic better than anybody else, being that he, they have their own skate park. <laughs> but they were humans to him. And that's what skateboarding has proved to represent is this community full of humans and full of people that have this same like for a, an activity in a sport and it brings you together like no other glue I mean it's a it's an incredible community and I didn't know what we were going to do or how we were going to get through the pandemic and skateboarding definitely gave us that outlet in the mental health and it gave Sandler a voice and towards the end when they were opening things up it got to a point where we were all getting a little frustrated because the, the skate parks that we go to and the, and the one, our home park, is out, outdoors, of course. And we were being diligent in, in honoring the, the, the space. Um, the, the trick was with Sandler, the, the really tricky part was, you know, with the camaraderie and the, the constant fist bumps and uh, knuckles, I had to make sure he understood. And there's a lot of hugging, surprisingly. that, that It's a very, it, hugs are, are in abundance at the skate park with his friends. And um, that was the one thing, you know, we worked on. But that was understood by this point. And so he had gotten wind one day when we were possibly trespassing at the skate park. He'd gotten wind that there was going to be a pro protest and he wanted to kind of be part of that. He absolutely wanted to be part of that. And that was something he strongly believed in. And he needed to be part of that. In fact, I think if he had his way, he would have headed up the protest. And I said, absolutely not. We are not partaking in any sort of protest. And it's not safe, especially a bunch of disgruntled skaters who have not been able to, to skate. And they want that park open. I said, you can you can do something, you know, we can, we can figure out what you can do, but we're not going to be part of a protest. And he said, I want to write a letter to the city. Mind you, his, his cognitive abilities or his, his academics level is about it under, you know, under a kindergarten level. I said, well, you could make a video. And he said, yes, I want to make a video. And he did. He made a, a PSA. He made his little announcement. It went, it, it went to thousands of people. And the city, I know, had gotten wind of the protest. I'd actually gotten a call. I think they thought I, there was a lot of connection with Sandler and the skate park. So I think they thought I had something to do with it, which I didn't. I didn't. I was just a, a, a pretty proficient poacher of the skate park, but I had nothing to do with the protest. And I think they were trying to avoid it, obviously. Um, and... A bunch of people within the industry and some of the the big names in skateboarding 
had a little something to do with the skate park opening, but it opened days after Sandler's little PSA. And the community was so awesome in letting Sandler believe that he had everything to do with the opening of the skate park. And he became a little bit of a, a, a celebrity amongst the community because everybody knew he, it, with his heartfelt PSA that he had a little something to do with getting that skate park opened. So he found his voice. And what skateboarding has done, and it's done for him and given me the chance as his mom to see it. People probably would think I'm taking it too far, but it has saved his life. And it really, it really has. It, um, it really formed who he was and was able to be the potential he reached and has continued to reach the progression in his life has all been formed by skateboarding when he was going into the sixth grade they uh, had pulled the program at his elementary school the special ed program and they had suggested um, that I send him to a different elementary school that would accommodate his disabilities better and he just had the one year left sixth grade was still in elementary school and I I declined and I said you know he doesn't do well with transition and I don't want him starting over and then having to go to a whole new junior high school so I thought you know stick it out for one more year and he loved he loved his school I've never been a big proponent for um integrating my special ed kids with with typical kids only because mine both test so low and I don't want them to get completely lost and I feel like we have just found different social outlets um but I just I just was never a proponent again for my own personal reasons I, I don't even know that I had any reasons I just it wasn't something I thought we would benefit from and Maybe I was just scared of it, to be honest with you. And I I didn't like the comparison. I hated seeing my kids amongst typical kids. It was very selfishly, it was very hard for me. I it was gut it is gut wrenching. And um we at that that school they go on a sixth grade camping trip and I'd gone with Bootsy and it was brutal and I hated I hated it. She enjoyed every minute of it and was none the wiser that the kids were so horribly mean and behind her back you know the eye rolling and the the comments and the things that they said and all oh, the gross special needs kids and it, it was awful but I wasn't about to not let Sandler go to sixth grade camp so I put on my sixth grade smiley face and off to camp we went which happens to be on an island full of sixth graders I mean <laughs> what could be a worse nightmare for me who does not want to be amongst typical kids with my special needs kid so Sandler's got a motto and he's always had an extreme amount of confidence and his motto every day he wakes up and says today's going to be the best day of my life or the best day ever one of those two things and it was no different at sixth grade camp two nights and three days and every day he woke up and said this is going to be the best day ever and for him every day we were there was the best day of his life and like his sister he was none the wiser and I took it all in and was totally heartbroken. And I thought, oh, shit, this year is going to break this kid. It's going to take his confidence away. And the kids were so mean and they were just brutal. And that age is so hard. And it's hard when you don't have every difference in the world. But when you've got a laundry list of delays and differences and disabilities, God, <laughs> things they can find things about any any kid in the world, but one has like obvious differences. You've got hearing aids and Coke bottle glasses that are always cattywampus and broken and hanging off your face. And I, it was gut wrenching. And we got on the boat back, and as I watched some of the kids, I might have been glad to see get seasick I thought what the hell are you going to do you better figure something out fast because you've got to fix this year and you've got to make sure him being merged with the typical kids isn't going to rob him of everything he's got confidence wise so I went and picked Bootsy up and we went straight to a skate shop and I told the, the guy that was working there way more information than he probably ever wanted to know about my life and what was going on. And I said, I need a full deck 
set me up on the deck for this kid. And I need somebody's name. I need somebody to help me put him in a, I, he didn't have any friends, so he couldn't go out and skateboard on the street or go, I couldn't send him out into the, the world of, you know, cars and, and unsafe places. I'm like, I need somebody that will teach him how to maneuver, you know, a skate park, navigate a skate park. And he said, all right, gave me a name. We didn't even leave the parking lot before I emailed the poor guy. His name's Ben. And he's like, Ben can mentor Sandler. I'm sure of it. He's a great guy and he's got a family of his own. He's just awesome. And I had emailed Ben before we left the parking lot and it was probably a 9,000 word text or message, uh, email, I guess. And Ben got back to me and we went and met him immediately. I don't know, within a couple of days and Sandler connected connected with Ben, he connected with that skate park, and he definitely connected even more with the skateboard. And one one day turned into, I want to be here every day, and I want to skate with Ben every day. And uh, we we were there one, one Friday night, and his it was, he was skating with Ben, and his teacher showed up, his sixth grade teacher, just the coolest gal ever, and just beautiful, like the, the bombshell sixth grade teacher shows up, and I said, what are you doing here? And she said, Sandler invited me. I thought, of course he did. He might have had a little crush on, on his sixth grade teacher. And so he wanted to show off. And he went to the the deep end of the, the bowl at the skate park. And it's about eight feet. And he just dropped in. And she happened to be filming him. And she took that video to school on Monday and showed it to all the fellow typical sixth graders. And they saw something that Sandler could do that most of them, I don't even know if any of them, could do what he did. And instantly it changed the course of his entire sixth grade year. And he got the amount of respect that I think he deserved, but also that he had earned. And he had started connecting with the skateboarding world. And so he had also started making friends and making friends of all ages. Mostly the older kids, he gravitated towards, again, anybody kind, uh, interested in this story. He loves to share so much information, <laughs> often way too much information. And this, I always thought like the skate park is a, a safe place for that. And it's a good place for that because, of course, he was also hard to understand. So I thought, well, they just won't understand him. Like when those really strange things fly out of his mouth, they'll just kind of whatever. But what I started finding was pushing him to talk more, speak more clearly. And of course he was propelled to do more things with his skateboard and the progression started kicking in and his speech clarity started kicking in. And I thought, oh my God, like he is communicating with everybody here. He's got friends everywhere from, you know, six years old to 60 years old. And they're interested in what he has to say and he wants them to understand him and everything just started to connect and the the parallel of of his cognitive abilities taking off and his physical abilities taking off and then he turns into this guy who becomes known amongst our skating community as one of the most committed skaters and the kid will slam like the biggest best faller in the world he will slam cement for hours and hours to get that few seconds or second or nanosecond whatever it is of elation and feeling of accomplishment to have found skateboarding not just for Sandler but for all three of us has been the greatest gift I can think of to date that we've gotten to experience it's given him of course the obvious progression in all aspects of life and it's given Bootsy a social a social element a social outlet it's given me all the inspiration and just the moments of complete and total mom pride and uh, god it's even inspired me to skate myself but not that I'm very good and not that I should have taken it up I don't have a single age appropriate injury at the moment but <laughs> I love it it is one of my favorite things in the whole entire world to do and by skating, I now get different angles to view Sandler's uh, tricks and to see his, his face from a different angle. And 
I actually don't have my phone in front of me as I'm usually sitting down and filming him or standing somewhere uh, to, to catch his tricks on film. And now I get to ride with him. And that created a, a very awesome day a few, a few months ago or a couple months ago. We were at the skate park and we were skating together. And I didn't have my phone because I do fall a lot and it, my phone would not be safe in my hand. But he was alling over a cone and somebody else fortunately was able to catch it on his phone at the skate park that day. But it gave me the chance to watch the trick without a phone in front of my face and see it from a whole different angle as I was in, in front of him when he was coming towards the, uh, the launch ramp and alling this, this cone. And I burst out crying. And the person who filmed him shared it with me and I, I posted it on his social media. And there was a gentleman who has been following Sandler's journey on his, on his social media. And he reached out and he sent me a message. And I think he so eloquently summed up exactly what skateboarding has been for us. And so today's special edition is the message I received from him in regard to the, the post of Sandler's trick. As a parent, I get your tears, but as a parent of a child like Sandler, I can only begin to imagine what it's like watching him progress beyond what you may have thought was even possible. Now what was once maybe in your head viewed as impossible is possible. What was once perhaps out of reach, he can grasp. This isn't an ollie over a cone. It's a fucking game changer. It's a giant middle finger to anyone who doubted him. That cone he flew over isn't just a cone. It's, a sim it's symbolic of any obstacle in his life. What are the limits? Who fucking knows? Anyone who sees a skate trick here would be correct in their enthusiasm, but are kind of missing the point. This is life, and anyone who doesn't cry when they see this just aren't seeing the bigger picture. I'm truly and deeply happy for the both of you. Please tune in next week for episode number six about a pretty terrible event in our life. It was a car accident that happened in 2018. Also, please like, follow, share, subscribe. You can find me on Instagram at adult underscore chicken. Uh, also TikTok, adult underscore chicken. Apple Podcasts, adult chicken. And Spotify, adult chicken. You can also find me on www.adultchicken.com. Make sure you get the .com in there or you're going to find out so much information about adult chickens and pictures of adult chickens. Thank you.